All right, good morning and welcome to Business Half Hour on Classic FM 97.3 station. It plays every song you know. It is brought to you in conjunction with Naira Metrics. I am Ifai Atama. My name is Bukola and we have in the studio with us this morning, uh, not in the studio, I mean, <laughs> you know the way it is. We have uh, Ugo Dre, we have Wade Ahime as well, and uh, Tokumbo Ishmael. She'll get to introduce herself later on the show because she's a special guest this morning. Good morning. I wish I was on the show. I was on the studio, rather. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know now. You know, you know the. Oh my thing. God! I miss that studio feel. I miss it. I miss it. But good morning, Lagos. This is business half hour. Uh, we can still do it whenever. This is technology. We we live in a world that's basically driven by technology now. So we can do these things from any part of the world. COVID nineteen is not going to stop us. So if you're listening, if you're in your way to work. Uh, in this very busy, uh, uh, is it bright Monday morning on Ted Milan Bridge? Tell me how that bridge is going. I hope things are going smoothly for you. Uh, this show is going to keep you company. Be, be rest assured. We've got very, very special guest on the show today. And I'm sure if you're, uh, you know, a business that is, you know, that is looking for some kind of expansion or uh, that has gone past the startup stage, there's a whole lot. Uh, that you can learn on this show today. We do this every Monday, 8 to 8.30. Uh, you can also join uh, all our, our um, um, Zoom um, platform and just be part of the show. Just, just join. You can log in, uh, you know, visit any of, our, any of our social media handles and get the link and just join. And then you can also see us live in the studio on in, and in our work from home locations. All right, so we have a special guest today. Um, so I, I want to, I, I, typically we allow our special guests to introduce themselves, but this is a really, really special person here. So I'm just going to do the honors of, you know, introducing her first to you, and then you can, she will now, you know, do the rest of it. So we have today a very, very special person. Uh, her bio is quite intimidating. Uh, but I'm not going to go into all of that. So uh, today on the show is Tokumbo Ishmael. Uh, she's the co-founder and managing director of Alithea Capital. Sounds like a Greek word, right? Uh, and yeah. also the chair of the African Private Equity and Venture Capital Association, AVCA. Uh, we have her on the show today. Good morning, madam. Good morning. How are you doing? Very, very fine. So, so excited to have you on the show today. Oh, by the way, we also have Wade on the show. And, and of course, our morning, Lagos. co-host, uh, Bukola and, and uh, Ifai. So, um, yeah, Tokumo, could you just, typically on this show, we, we start by you know, having you introduce yourself and giving us background of your person before we delve into your business. So uh, let Lagos know you better. Okay. Um, as you said, I'm Tokumo Ishmael and co-founder and managing director of Alethea Capital. Alethea Capital is a private equity firm, um, which means that it finances small and growing businesses. Uh, it gives them capital, but also provides them with support and mentors the entrepreneurs and founders. Uh, typically, uh, we also like to invest in businesses that solve you know, the intractable problems that we have in our country um, and indeed on the continent. We're based out of uh, Lagos and operate across the continent. What are these intractable problems? Many people don't have access to finance. Uh, our country has uh, about 60% of people who are banked, but many unbanked, um, which means that they can't use the normal financial services that you and I are used to. Many people don't have access to good and affordable health. And this has come to light um, even more. The, this gap has come to light even more in uh, during this uh, COVID um, pandemic. Uh, affordable education, access to affordable education. So we invest in businesses that make it possible for people to have access to these essential services. We also address food security issues by investing in agribusiness entrepreneurs. So we, we like our money to make money, but we also like it to do good in our economy and society. Fantastic. So have you, have you ever, have you always um, been in private equity before, you know, co-founding uh, Alithea Capital? 
Um, yeah, I, before co-founding Alithia Capital, yes, I was in private equity. I was one of the first fund managers for a foreign uh, private equity firm that moved into Nigeria um, a long time ago, Aureus. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, I also worked on Wall Street. I'm an investment banker by training, um, financed a number of mergers and acquisitions. And I've also worked in Silicon Valley with tech entrepreneurs and uh, finance in tech. All right, so we're going to get to the business of, of private right. equity, but just trying to get to also understand your foray into this, this space, especially, you know, in Nigeria, where you have a lot of young people looking to go abroad, right? And then, you know, here you are, you've gathered all the experience out there, and then you're back, and then you've started. So did you, you, you starting like their capital or co-founding it, was it out of necessity, or did you just get tired of staying abroad? What was the motivating factor? No, so um, I'm a Nigerian. I went to Ife for my first <laughs> uh, degree, so great Ife. I studied computer science and um, economics, and, um, and I entered the world of finance through um, a certain journey. But at the heart of it, my heart has always been in Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian, even though I wasn't born in Nigeria. My parents are Nigerian, and um, I spent a good part of my youth um, in Nigeria. And it hurts when you see um, your country um, and the state, if the state of it doesn't enable um, the people, everyday folk, um, the masses to afford services that enable them to reach their full potential. And when I started Alethea, there were a number of things that I saw going on. Um, I saw that I could make good money elsewhere, yes. But I also saw that I could use my skills to make uh, money in Nigeria and at the same time solve our intractable problems. At the end of the day, we are the people we're waiting for. Um, and yes, you can go abroad and I, 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 I encourage people that want to travel and have the journey, but it's good to travel, have that journey and see how you can use your experiences to better your country. So but, uh, when, you, when you got back, how, how many years were you away for? And how many years have you been back for? Um, okay, you're making me try and remember so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, I spent a good part of my youth in Nigeria, um, but I also spent even more um, growing up in the UK. So um, for me, when I came to Nigeria, um, I'd been to university, but I'd, I'd left oh, my late teens um, after university um, and I'd worked maybe probably about 20, 25 years um, in the UK and the US. And then decided that actually I have enough skills. I can, and I could see the, the trajectory of how the economy and those that run the economy were thinking about small and growing businesses, which are the engine of our, of our, of our country and, and indeed of the continent. And so I had skills investing in businesses like that, and I felt that I could come back and make a difference with that. And I've been back in Nigeria since 2003 or something. So it's a long oh, so, time ago. So you've been around then? <laughs> I've been around. So it's not, I didn't just come back yesterday, right? All right. And um, I worked with a couple of firms. Um, I, I was brought back to the country with one particular firm, Aureus Capital at the time. I worked with them for a few years. And then I also worked in the oil and gas um, industry, financing um, um, oil and gas assets at Ocean and Oil. And I saw what was around and I decided to find Alethea on the premise that, again, we can make money, but we can, invest, purposely invest and proactively invest in those solutions that can help change our society. Fantastic. So, so, so let's talk a little bit about investing now. And I like, I like that you mentioned, um, you sort of alluded to impact funding, which is, you know, pretty important for, for developing economies like Nigeria. And that, you know, you also sort of mentioned that you, you guys go into agri the agriculture space, the health, health sector. Are there, are, there are there actual opportunities uh, for private equity 
in Nigerians' healthcare sector? Because you've seen, uh, you know, the way COVID-19 has sort of put things in the fore for everyone. Uh, you've seen governments campaigning to, you know, to raise all sorts of intervention funds. But what you hear from some critics is, are there companies that are sort of, you know, built in a way that would allow private equity firms actually, you know, invest? Do they exist? And if they do, yes. where? So, so the healthcare sector, one thing we have to understand about any sector is that each sector has different subsectors, right? And yeah. there's a whole value chain that goes towards providing good health care. And that the delivery of good health care is not just in hospitals and clinics, it also encompasses the efficient and um, affordable delivery of good um, um, medication and medicines and medical supplies. We've all seen what happened with um, the lack of personal protection, protection equipment and how mm. people were um, rushing for that. So even the manufacturing of those comes under healthcare for us. It's all in the healthcare value, um, value chain. So for us, indeed, there are good opportunities and it's because there's been a lack of investment in the appropriate infrastructure that opens up opportunities. You know, there are many, like you said, there are many young people on the phone, on the radio today listening, and they see many problems around them. Not everybody can pick up arms and say, you know what, I'm going to turn this problem into an opportunity and do something about it. But those that can should, and that's what we do. We see there's a gap in the market and we look to invest to make the companies that deliver healthcare medicines, um, equipment, make them efficient and have the right funding that enables them to deliver uh, the quality that we require. And quality doesn't just mean being expensive, just means being affordable mm -hmm. and, you know, accessible. So, so some of our guys are listening right now. Uh, so, sorry, Wadi. So some of our guys are, are listening right now and and they're asking, okay, so I've, I've been in healthcare for say 10 years. Uh, I've gone past the startup stage. What do they need to do to attract investments from, you know, private equity firms like, like Alithia Capital? Well, obviously um, over the radio, I can't analyze um, everyone, but what I can, I can say is there, there are four main things that we look at um, when we're uh, reviewing a business for investment at Alithia Capital. The first one is management. And I say management, management, management. Who's running it? Who's running this uh, business? What's the character behind the, the, this person? What experience do they have? What track record can they point to? Do they have the relevant track record for what they're trying to, the business they're trying to get off the ground? That's one thing. So. If you find, if you have a tick on that, great. The next thing is, what kind of opportunity are they bringing to us? What is this business? What kind of, is, is this business something that is easily replicable? Therefore, there are no real barriers to entry for the business and the industry. Is it something unique? Is it solving one of the problems that we have identified? I mentioned access to finance access to healthcare, access to education, and also access to energy. Those are essential services that we believe ordinary Nigerians need to have available and affordable. Oh. So does your opportunity fall within that? And like I said as well, addressing food security challenges through agribusinesses. The next thing we look at is, okay, so that's great. That's a business. Can it scale? Oh. Um, is it a business that can grow to have return potential? Like I said earlier, we want to solve problems. We want to do that sustainably. And we want to make sure that we make money from it as well, because we are representing investors that are looking for a return. And their returns are twofold, financial and social. So does, your, does that business have the opportunity to provide us with that return? Yeah. Ooh, one, 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 one last one, one last one, one second. 
And the fourth thing we look at is, so if we put our money into this, what's the likelihood that we can get our money out of this business? Can we exit from this business at some point in the future? We do not want to take over a business and end up being a jack of all trades, trying to run a, an energy business, a bank, a hospital. No, we invest minority control stakes. And at some point in the future, when we've worked with you, partnered with you to grow your business, then we say, you know what? Okay, our job is done here. How do we come out of this? So those are the four things, four main things that we look at. Obviously, each of those will have sub- Sub, 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 sub things as well. I think, I think we got to go on break. Uh, so when we go on break, when, when we're back on break, I think we're going to take questions from Wade. And I'm sure um, if I am a caller, probably have one or two questions as well to go. But just to recap, so Kumba just mentioned four important things now. Get private equity attention. For, at least you need to get the attention first before you get the money. You've got to have sound management. There's got to be an opportunity in your business, particularly healthcare, agriculture, food security, energy. Can it scale? We've always said that, Bukola, you know we've always said that on this show. How does your business scale? So scaling is having a business that goes from earning one million naira to a billion naira, at least maybe in five or 10 years. You got to show that path. And then exit potential because investors, private equity investors don't want to be there forever. They've got to be able to put money in there and then leave at some point. So we're going to be back on this show and then we'll have more questions for talking about. Thank you very much. Bukola, over to you. All right. <laughs> great so far. Great. 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 Great so far. Um, so come on, before we come on, uh, so maybe I, I should just I should just ask this. You mentioned four things Danny, that businesses need to acquire. And um, when you look at the environment that we find ourselves which is not um what's it called? The environment is the policy policy system is not as robust as you find in Europe or America. What are the things that you think people need to do? Because a lot of small businesses really don't have these four things. So how do they go about getting the acquiring this skill? I don't know. But it's been a nice question. Uh, oh, is it, you want to take it on air or off air? Right yeah, so no, no, we'll take it on air. I just wanted that so that she can take yeah, it. Yeah, we'll take it on air. I'll, I'll address that. I'll address that. And somebody also it. typed a question here about uh, pol um, exit strategies. I'll address yeah, that. Yeah, we'll take well. that as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Off air now, Tokumbo. Uh, are we back on? Okay, no. How how has it been managing equity funds in Nigeria in comparison to Europe and America, especially as it relates to small businesses? Actually, there's an abundance of small businesses um, with opportunities. Um, the thing is being able to find the right um, match, I mean, along those four things. One of the business, we've invested in, in banks, we've invested in agriculture, in energy. One of my um, proud, um, com one of the companies that I'm most proud of is a company called Paga, which oh, is a failure to many had, of you. We had them on so, the show some time back. Yeah, yeah, so that was, we were, the, we were the first institutional investor in that entity and it embodies a lot of um, what we look for in businesses. We've also um, invested in, um, in banks that have gone from being just a unit bank to now national banks, um, microfinance banks in Nigeria. So, uh, you know, there, there are opportunities. You... And as a private equity investor, what I always say is we have to create those opportunities. Sometimes businesses don't, many times businesses don't come fully cooked. But we, we work and, and point people in the direction like, okay, you need to do this with respect to your management. You need to think about um, how you're addressing your business model. The way it currently is, it's not attractive to us. We don't see how it's going to scale. How do you turn those things around? So, you know, I'll, I'll address that. Are we on air? Oh, yeah. 
Bukala, we gotta go back. Time is running. Okay. It's business of our classic FM 97.3. Show me the way by Sky, but we say show me the money. Well, show us the money. Yes. <laughs> She's a special guest on the show this morning. And then we have Oadere Ugodre as well from Narometrics. Ifai and Bukola, as always. All, All right. right, great. Welcome back, Lagos. Um, if you're just tuning in, we have Tokumbo Ishmael. She's the co-founder, CEO of Alifia Capital. Uh, we're talking private equity this morning. So if you've got a you know, business that has gone past you know, the startup stage and you've got four qualities, we kind of mentioned them earlier uh, on the show, then uh, you probably, probably, probably might just be under their radar. Uh, so we, we've got some questions. Uh, one question from some of our guest panelists. Uh, we also have one from, uh, from our, a question from our participants and then one from Wadi. So Wadi, we're going to take yours first and then we'll go uh, to the question from the, from the participants. So quickly, okay, no time. Um, so, so quickly, um, you mentioned four things that you, um, small businesses need to have. Um, considering the environment, how do they ensure that they get these this skills? Because it's not easy in Nigeria. Yes. So let me, I'll go through um, each of those skills and say very quickly. So on the management side, to get experience, you need to work somewhere, right? Or you yeah. need to have some relevant education or something. You know, something that I say to entrepreneurs is, you know, apprenticeship is important. Go and learn your trade. Understand your industry. You, some people can wake up and be entrepreneurs overnight. Mm -hmm. Many of us need to, first of all, work somewhere yep. and yep. gain that experience. So that's on that. On your opportunity, and again, the uniqueness of your opportunity, <clears throat> and its potential. Look, there are many problems around us and we have a good number of entrepreneurs around us that have seen these problems and turned those around. Even from um, the person selling food on the, on the roadside, they've stood somewhere and seen that there are people that cut, there's traffic through here, significant traffic through here. How do I address their food needs? The same way I, I was talking about um, Paga earlier on, Tayo Vyusu of Paga saw that there was a need. People, there was too much use of cash. Um, we needed to move to digital means and moving to digital means um, of transacting meant that we could bring more people into the finance system. He created a platform to solve that problem. There's an, another one of our companies, Lydia, they saw that SMEs don't have access to loans because the banks um, are using traditional methods of credit scoring and asking for um, asset coverage. So Lydia formed a digital means of bringing those SMEs into the ecosystem for financing and use the alternative methods of credit scoring. You know, they could have sat back and said, well, gosh, it's too hard to think about how SMEs can qualify. You look at the problems, a good way to think about a solution is start from the problem because that means there's a need. Somebody needs something. Start from that problem and work your way into a solution. Um, is the private equity um, entity investor going to be able to exit? Somebody asked the question and I'll combine it with a question from the panelists. You know, okay. given that there's, um, we don't have robust, um, capital markets for exiting um, SMEs for IPO. Oh. Well, there are different ways that we look at exit alternatives. Sometimes we structure it such that, many times, such that we can make <clears throat> the business attractive to the next level of investor, financial buyers. Because when we partner with you to grow your business, the idea is then that you're even more attractive to a bigger business. Mm -hmm. You've gone from being a fish, a small fish in a pond to a big fish in a bigger pond. And we're looking for you to grow such that you're not just selling your goods in Lagos, you're selling them, in Abuja. To, you're sending them all across over. the all over. all over, exactly. So, and by the time you 
are global and you're selling to other parts of Africa and indeed exporting, then there's another type of investor that is interested in you and we can sell to them. So there are different ways that we look, that Alethea looks at opportunities so that we can think about how we can exit from them at some point in the future. Fantastic. I'm sure if, if anybody who's been sitting here has getting some very good education. Interestingly, we've actually had uh, um, Paga show as well. I think we had sometime last year, and hopefully we'll get leave. Um, okay, we have, we've got a minute left. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of questions coming in here. Uh, there's another question here from somebody. Yeah. So, let me tell you something here. Is there a capital investment, so how much you can invest in a business? Well, we look at um, how they absorb uh, the, the capacity of a business to absorb our capital. And it depends on the size of the business. And we're not looking to own a majority. We definitely don't want to own anything like 50% or over 50% of a business. We're not trying to run that business, right? Mm -hmm. We want to um, partner with um, a business owner support them with finance and advice and access to our networks of other funders and talent and business advisors so that they can grow. We don't want to take over and start running your business. That's not my job. My job, I'm a private equity investor. I'm not planning to become an entrepreneur in um, banking or healthcare, et cetera. I want to finance and support those entrepreneurs. Okay, all right. Ugo, you were saying something. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, we, we had a question, but I think I kind of answered it already um, to our panelists. Um, it, this has been such such an, uh, a very engaging and lightning session. I just wish we can have this uh, again, maybe like a part two of this, that I hope you have time uh, you know, to indulge us to come. Uh, I know that your kind of business has challenges, and we haven't even gone into all those all those challenges, you know, getting, finding the right, right business, challenges around management, opportunities, all these things that you basically very well elaborated and i'm i'm promising you lagos we're going to beg uh, Takumbo to please come back to this show so that she can give us a lot more uh, insight because we're seeing a lot of questions a lot of people really really are interested uh, in private equity we're also getting questions from our social media handles as well uh but before we go uh there's something we kind of like like to close with like you know have you got that watchword or something that kind of guides you every morning so think about that entrepreneur out there who's willing to listen to something that they can just kind of write on. Uh, what's that, you know, watchword for you that you, know, you, you sort of look up to every day uh, when you're trying to succeed? Well, the, the name Alethea means truth. I want to conduct, um, every day I want to wake up and conduct my business in truth. I want to be in truth with my partners who are my entrepreneurs. I want to work in truth with my financiers, my, the people that give us money that trust us to manage their money. So for me, truth is a, a watchword in the work that I do. And when I get up, I say to myself, what is it that I'm going to do today that I'm going to, that's going to be noteworthy that I'm going to put on my CV? Mm. Every day I'm thinking, what do I, I still think about my CV. Um, and I say still, because really I don't, I'm not looking for another job. I, I love what I do. I love, but every day I'm thinking, what am I doing today that's going to be newsworthy, noteworthy, that will enable me to solve the problems, intractable problems that we have so that people can, everyday people, everyday folk can reach their full potential. Because when everyday folk reach their full potential, in Nigeria, Nigeria will reach its full potential. Africa will reach its full potential. I like that. I like the fact that you spoke about truth. Bukola, over to you, Bukola. Truth. Yeah, truth. I like the fact that you spoke about truth. Truth is essential in everything we do, sometimes quite lacking in our daily activities, though, so we need to happen that. Thank you very much, Tukumba, for coming on the show. Thank you, Ugo. Thank you, Adair. And we need to go. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a lovely week ahead. Thank you very much. Bye.